All right, we're moving into section 2.4, where we're going to start looking at change in a quantity and subtracting real numbers. So in the last section, we were looking at addition involving sign numbers, and now we're going to look at subtraction involving sign numbers. And to subtract with sign numbers, we just use a little math trick, which is that we can rewrite any subtraction, a minus b, as an addition, a plus negative b. Or in words, to subtract a number, you can add its opposite. Now the reason we want to do this trick is so that that way we don't have to learn new rules for how do you subtract when negative numbers are around. We're going to say what you do is you think of it as an addition problem and then you just use those old rules. Let me just show you an example here to show you that that works. If we have something simple like 7 minus 3, we know that's 4. We can do that subtraction because we don't think of it as involving sign numbers. But if we tried to apply this rule anyways, would it work? And the rule says take that subtraction and change it to adding the opposite. So instead of thinking of 7 minus positive 3, I'm thinking of, thinking of this as 7 plus negative 3. And as we learned in the, same, in the last section, uh, when you have different signs, you take the difference and the bigger number wins out on sign. So the difference is 4 and the bigger number is positive, so we still get 4. So when you look at that here, that might not look like such a good idea because I took something simple that you learned how to do when you were in second grade and made it, you know, complicated. But that's going to help us when we get to some of the messier expressions like the negative 3 minus 9 or the negative 7 minus a negative 3. Now, of course, you're perfectly able to just go ahead and do this 7 minus 3 just like you always have learned to do it. But we want to remember that it could be done this way for the com more complicated problems. So let's look at some of those examples. When you see negative 3 minus 9, what you want to do is rewrite the negative 3, and then the subtraction, you're going to say, nope, that's going to be an addition. And instead of a, subtracting 9, I'm going to add the opposite, so add it as negative 9. And now if we think of our rules on the number line, you're on the left and you move further to the left, both movements are to the left, we add those numbers up, we get 12, and if both movements were to the left, the answer is negative 12. And so, do you have to rewrite it? That's a question I often hear from students. And I would say, no, you don't have to, but here's kind of the test of whether you, you should or not. If I point at this number and say, what's that number? So think about that in your head right now. What is that number that I'm pointing at right now? So if your answer to that number was 9, then you're not thinking of this correctly. You should be thinking of it as a negative 9. So if I point at that number and say, what number is that? And in your mind, you think right away that's negative 9, then you could do this without rewriting it. You could just say, okay, I have a negative 3 and a negative 9. That's going to add up to negative 12. But if you think of it as a, a 9 that's being subtracted, then you want to rewrite this to force your brain to start thinking of all of these as addition problems and and to see that as a negative number and then on this next one I would always rewrite this personally when you have the two negatives like I talked about in the last section you have those two negatives we're just going to make a positive out of that so this is going to be negative 7 plus 3 now that also fits our rule up here because it says if you have a subtraction you can change that to addition but then do the opposite of what this number was and we know from again the previous section that the opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. And then when we look at this problem, sometimes people put negative 10 for that because they, they think of it like this, 7 plus 3. But we have to see those negatives as really kind of firmly attached to the number. So we're at negative 7 and then we go 3 units to the right. And what we really want to get out of that number line discussion is it's a left and a right. Those are opposite movements. And when you have opposite movements, you need to subtract. So I'm going to do 7 minus 3 there, which would be 4. But that's not the right answer, because when you do this, you always have to think, well, what wins out? And it's the bigger number, and the bigger number was negative 7, so we're going to end up on the left. And so I'll put that negative in both spots, so it's actually negative 4. And then here, um, as I looked at this just now, I, I thought, okay, I have two negative numbers. So because I've done a lot of the math, I see this right away as negative 257. If you don't didn't see it that way right away, if you saw it as a negative 100 and then a subtraction, then you want to force your brain to start thinking of that as adding a negative by rewriting it as plus negative 257. 
And again, that's an optional step, but I think it's a step you should always do unless you look at that number and right away think of it as a negative. And then I would do some scratch work off on the side, and I, the first thought I would have is, what am I really doing here? Am I adding these numbers, or am I subtracting them? And when they have the same sign, it's an addition problem. So 257 plus 100 is 357. But both of those were negative numbers or movements to the left on the number line, so the answer is actually negative 357. All right, and let's look at that one more time with decimals. That makes the math maybe a little bit um, slower, but it doesn't change the rules. So if we have negative 1.7 minus 7.4, I would rewrite that as negative 1.7 plus negative 7.4. And this is basically the same situation as right up above. They're both negative, so I need to add them together. So doing a little scratch work on the side, 1.7 plus 7.4, get 11, carry the 1, bring down the decimal, add these up, looks like 9.1. And they were both negative, so after I add them up, the answer will still be negative. And even though it may take us even longer to do a fraction problem, the rules are still not different. And so a lot of times people look at this, and the first thing they think is common denominator. <coughs> Excuse me. The first thing I would think about on this is that I don't like that there's those two negatives together. So I would have that idea again, two negatives, make a positive. And I would rewrite that and say this is 5 twelfths, and those two negatives make that a plus sign, and it's plus 1 6. Now, once I've gotten rid of those double negatives, now I'll start thinking about the idea of these being fractions and I need a common denominator. So right away I see that 6 goes into 12 twice, so if I could multiply this by 2 on the bottom, I'd get a 12 in both spots. So I'm going to do that, but I need to also multiply the numerator by the same thing to keep that balanced. And so now just working through that, we'd have 5 twelfths plus it looks like 2 twelfths. And when you have a common denominator, you keep that common denominator, add the numerators, so we end up with just 7 twelfths. So the sign number part of this was actually a really easy part, just the two negatives made a positive, and then the rest was just doing some fraction work. When you have scratch work like we do on some of these, it might be a good idea to go back through and maybe circle your answers just to make it clear with all the scratch work and different stuff going on what part represents your actual answer. All right, let's finish off this page with an application. It says four hours ago the temperature was negative 12 degrees Fahrenheit, something we don't have to deal with in California too often. If the temperature has decreased by 19 degrees Fahrenheit in the last four hours, what is the current temperature? So you can almost think of this like a number line, which a thermometer kind of is, right? It's just a vertical one. On that thermometer, we were at negative 12. And then the temperature has decreased by 19. So when I hear decreased by 19, I think that sounds like a subtraction. It has gone down by or... We've subtracted 19 from what the temperature used to be. So what am I going to do with that? Well, again, how I do this depends on how you view this number. If you see that as 19, then you better rewrite it because it's really a negative 19. You want to see it that way. So I'm going to rewrite it. I have negative 12 and then plus negative 19. These are both positive, so I'm going to add them. Sorry, they're both the same sign. So I'm going to add them together. 19 plus 12 would be 11, carry the 1, 31. But they are both negative. So this is going to be negative 31. And then this one's an application, so we don't just stop at the number. We have to do the units, and it looks like the units on the temperature was Fahrenheit. So what is the current temperature? Negative 31 degrees Fahrenheit. Bitter, bitter cold. And again, some scratch work over there, so... I'll circle my answer here. All right, continuing on in section 2.4. The lowest elevation on dry land in the world is at the edge of the Dead Sea, negative 1,312 feet, and the highest elevation is at the top of Mount Everest, 29,035 feet. Find the change in elevation from the Dead Sea to Mount Everest. 
So the key word I think here is the word change. We're trying to find the change in elevation. When we're trying to find the change in quantity, we want to do a subtraction. In fact, we have that defined for us right down here. If you're doing the change in a quantity, then the change in the quantity is the ending amount minus the beginning amount. So it does turn into a subtraction when you're doing change. So find the change in elevation if you go from the Dead Sea to Mount Everest. So our ending point is Mount Everest, and Mount Everest is 29,030 feet high. So I'm going to start out with the ending amount, 29,035. And then I'm going to subtract the beginning amount. And this is where people get into trouble. What's the beginning amount? It's not 1312. The beginning amount is negative 1312. So we, a lot of times people will do this as just 29,000 minus the 1300 and not get the two negatives. But you have this negative and that negative for different reasons. This negative is because they want you to do change. So you have to subtract. And then this negative is because you're coming from an elevation that's below sea level. And if you have those two negatives, they're going to make a positive. So we do the addition over here on the side as scratch work. Actually, let's rewrite it. It's 29,035 plus, because of the two negatives, 1312. And now I'm going to do that scratch work. 7, 4, 3, 10, so 30. So it looks like the change in elevation would be 30,347 feet. And again, be really careful. One subtraction because of the word change, and then this negative because that was the ending, or the beginning elevation was itself negative. All right, let's look at another example. The changes in Toyota Prius car sales in thousands of cars from one year to the next are shown in the table. As we went from 2002 to 2003, the change was 5, and it's actually 5,000. So since that's positive, I would take that to mean they sold 5,000 more Priuses in 2003 than they did in 2002. When we go from 03 to 04, there's a, a big gain of 29,000 more cars sold. As the next year, it got, went up even more, an increase of 54,000 cars sold. But for some reason, from 2005 to 2006, they actually lost 1,000 cars worth of sales. But a very nice rebound in 2007, plus 74,000. And then for, again in 2008, for some reason, we see this dip where it dropped 22,000 in sales. So if 20,000 cars were sold in 2002, what were the sales in 2008? So to do that, we have to track all these changes from 2002 to 2008. So I'd start off with my beginning amount, 20,000 cars. And I'm just going to write 20. We'll deal with 1,000 a little later. And then what happened in that next year? The sales went up, so plus 5. And how about the next year? Sales went up again, plus 29. The next year, sales go up again. And then the next year, a dip. So plus, minus 1, and then a growth, and then another decline, so plus negative 22. So that would be translating all these changes into addition subtraction problems. If the sales went up, it's a plus. If the sales went down, it's a minus. And then we want to go ahead and combine all these together. So you could just work from left to right on this. That would be totally fine. Another common thing that people do is work all the positives together and the negatives together and then combine those two, and I'm going to go ahead and choose that path. So I'm going to say our positives are 20 plus 5, 29, plus 54, and then plus 74. And then our negative numbers would be the negative 1 and also the negative 22. And for all these positives, I'm just going to cheat a little and use my calculator there. So if you add all those up, you get 182. And I'll do this part in my head. They're both negative, so you add them together, that'd be 23. But they're both negative, so it stays negative, so that would be negative 23. And then when you're doing opposite signs, that's really a subtraction. So I want to do 182 minus 23. 
which is 159, and the bigger number was positive, so it would be 159. So now what was the actual answer to their question? In 2008, what were the sales? 159,000 cars. All right, and then during which periods were sales increasing? So any of the times we did positive, we had sales increasing. So it looked like sales were increasing from 2002 all the way to 2005. And then we had a dip from 2005 to 2006. It was a minus 1. So that would be, for this next question down here, the decreasing period. And then we had an increase again from 2006 to 2007. And then we ended up our chart with one more decrease as we went from 2007 to 2008. So all the negatives represent uh, years that were decreasing. All the positives represent years that were increasing. And because we had several years in a row where it was increasing, I just lumped all those together as one time period from 2002 to 2005.